I believe the Tundra went 757. Now the question is, can Nathan and his big, bold Ram beat that? They're really closely matched. This is gonna be a really good challenge. Let me reintroduce you to one of my favorite power plants, the Hemi. This particular one puts out 395 horsepower and more importantly, 407 pound-feet of torque. It's a 5.7 liter V8, so it's about the same size as the Toyotas, but it has a better output. Here's the thing, indeed, eight-speed automatic transmission, but it's hooked up to a 392 rear axle. So. Power to the Toyota, damn it. That sounds really good. Yeah, Hemis are awesome. That dual exhaust, it sounds cool. The Hemi always sounds cool. But the problem is, if you're towing a trailer, like a horse trailer, maybe you're an RV trailer, you've got exhaust units going straight out the back of the truck. It's not coming out a single pipe like it does on the Tundra, which adds to the side. But most trucks shoot it out to the side. So I don't know, you know, we haven't measured carbon monoxide, but that to me is a, a little different when you're towing traders. It might even affect the gel coat on your boat. It might do a lot of different things. depends on how much exhaust is coming out. Now, not all beds are built the same. The Ram has this Ram box, which is very handy. And another nice feature is when you lock it, it not only locks the Ram box, but it locks the tailgate. So, According to Ram, that is the most stolen part of a pickup, and it will not get stolen, according to Ram, on this one because it's locked. Let's check the height. It's 21 inches, which means it's actually relatively easy to get stuff in there. There is a downside, a lot less room in the back here than in the Tundra. Now, Ram was kind enough to send us a pickup with all the bells and whistles, including air suspension on the front and on the back. Now, the setting that this is in right now means that the truck lowers itself when you put it in park so that you can get in and out of it easily. So that means that we're at 52 inches. What it should do is once we load it up and turn the engine on and put it in drive, it should raise itself up and self-level. So let's see if that happens. Yeah. That's yeah. That's coming up. Oh yeah, check it out, it's coming up. Look at that, you can see it. How cool is that? Look at that. So now we're back to, oh, we're back to a little bit actually higher. We're at 53 inches, so air suspension, you gotta love it. Now, in case you're wondering, this is the Diamond in the Rough, my old Lincoln Continental, and we haven't done much to it, so we're using it as ballast for now. Nathan, how much does it weigh? Combine everything weighs 7,200 pounds. And when you add me, you, and Mr. Truck? Oh, maybe it's a 246, 700 pounds extra. So we're towing about 8,000 pounds, give or take whatever Nathan has for lunch. Yeah, yeah. let's just hit the road, come on. All right, let's go do it. All right, here we are, coming out of the Ike Tunnel on our way down. And Nathan, tell us about what you are driving, you lucky dog. I, I love Ram trucks, and the reason I love them because they're so macho, just ugh, big cojones. 5.7 liter Hemi V8. It's uh, 395 horsepower, 407 pound-feet of torque, eight-speed automatic transmission, and it's towing, well, a little beast of burden is towing. Yes, the Lincoln diamond in the rough and you have a hockey puck for a gear shifter yeah you know that's the one thing I don't like uh, is the rotating knob it's well you know they have them in Jaguars I guess that's okay but in this I want a big lever I want just like something you know big with that pull it back and it makes <laughs> some noise and you hear something snap and uh, that's what I want this is like oh okay oh uh, oh wait no no it, it it doesn't feel like a gear shifter it feels 
<laughs> feels like something that should be on a computer. Now this is completely, you know, my opinion, but I think out of all the trucks we've tested, this is the best looking truck. With one caveat, it does have hood scoops that are not functional, and that is always a pet peeve of mine. If you're going to put something in to a car or a truck, make it functional. Yeah, so. yeah, and the thing is, is the hood has like this power bulge on it too, so it looks like the air scoops would be right there and, you know, cool it off. I, yeah. I don't understand why it's not functional. That's true. It's a good looking hood. It looks tough. It looks mean. It's just, uh, you gotta add some aftermarket accessories to it. Yeah, well, Kent, you got a sawzall at home, right? Yes, we can. We can <laughs> just cut right through that hole. Yeah, we'll plasma cut them right That's in. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Six hundred and seventy degrees. Holy cow, that's Woo! A record. Wow, we know we have the brakes. Oh. Yeah, you guys gonna go to the trailer? You got some more right there, man. Yeah, yeah I'm breaking it down. Yeah, I got it. Mm, smell. The smell. Mm, yeah, and I aroma. just didn't act like we were breaking more. No, that's the thing is that, but I did feel the ABS kicking in every time I did it. Oh, because I think uh, we had the gain on this. We had adjusted really well for the truck. Yeah. So the trailer should have been helping us slow down this hill. That's what the trailer right. says. 84 degrees? So wow, we're still not using that so trailer we're to, So we yeah. were doing the majority of the braking is just what it like is. Just like on the Tundra. So I that's guess that's just a fair like a, example. Hey, do you have a transmission temperature there so we have that? Trans, uh, 168. 168. Thank Coolant you. temp is 201, which is in okay, the middle. So and our oil temperature is 210. We're doing fine there. Yeah. All right, gentlemen, on our way up the I Gauntlet right now, and I've got the stopwatch. Nathan, you've got the foot to control the acceleration, and uh, we've got pretty much the same weather as we had when we ran the Tundra. So there we here go. we go. Start. Got it. All right. Wide open throttle. Yep. Foot's all the way down. It's all the way down. Uh, now, you guys did make a discovery coming around the stoplight. Tell them what we found out. Folks, we made a mistake. Go ahead, Ken. Well, we had the gain set at zero. <laughs> on the brake controller. On the brake controller for the trailer, so we had no trailer brakes whatsoever. Even in an emergency situation, we would have not been able to do a manual override. It was zero. So yeah. it means the truck did all the work, which was very impressive that it actually slowed us down the hill the way we wanted it to. The only thing it did is it produced heat. But it did a good job controlling the trailer without trailer brakes. That's why those front brakes were 670 degrees when we hit the bottom of the I gauntlet. So this baby took it on. We didn't really know that it was doing that. We foolishly assumed that it was set and it wasn't. And you know what? The truck still handled all that braking. It's it did. It did, it did well. It didn't. Uh, the trailer didn't try to catch us. Now we do want to make sure we set that up on this time. I will turn it up. Okay, let's, let's. I actually have to lay off a couple times on the accelerator because I was starting to fly well over the posted speed. This thing has a lot of uh, reserve. So far. So far. Of course, we're not at the part where it gets steep yet, so we'll see what happens when we get to the steep part. Yeah, this will be an interesting contrast between the vehicles. The, the extra torque, that extra 350 foot-pounds of torque that the Toyota puts out, versus all those gears that this has. The eight-speed automatic is fantastic transmission. It, two, uh, two top gears are overdrive, so six is direct. So all those spacing, those gears from six down to one, are closer together than they are in the Tundra. So the, the whole purpose there is if it will go up a gear, give us more speed by having that close ratio in the gear ratios. And this is the point where we start to test that. It's getting steeper, Nathan. How's it doing? No problem. No I'm, problem. I'm just keeping it at 60. I've got lots of pedal left. Very impressive. Yeah, it's got plenty of power. But once so again, it's in a tow haul mode, right? Yes, it's tow haul mode. No, it's not. There it is. Now we're in tow haul mode. Uh, once again, guys, we start at about 9,000 feet, give or take, and go up to about 12,000, give or take. But what that means is that we lose about 30% air density at the top of this gauntlet, which translates directly to about 30% less horsepower, so well over 100 horsepower down from where this truck would be at sea level. And you know, too, this has that active ram air, so this will decide whether it wants to suck air out the front or suck air down below. The cool slots air. open and close, right? Yes. So the active ram air, we'll see if it uh, it helps or not either. It should give us even more cool air. And like we talked about on the Tundra, more of a natural intercooler by, you know, compressing the air, the density, and giving us a little, a little more boost from that. Okay, next time we get to the steeper part, Nathan goes wide open for idle. Why don't you uh, get out the sound meter and we'll see how loud it is in here. Okay, we'll do that. 
Oh, let's do it now. Let's, this is going out wide open. So let's yeah. see what we got. Let's turn it around. Yeah. Well, at 69, that'd be the same as the Tundra. Yeah, it's about the same, but of course we're not at full acceleration yet. Well, right. What's all the way down now? Is it? Mm hmm. What's all the way down? Just a hair over 60. So now I gotta back off a little bit. This is starting to climb again. Is that 4,500 RPM? Is that what you're running now? Yep. Yeah, we did the 69 sound meter decibels on the Tundra at about 4,000 RPM, and it only gained a little at 5,000 RPM. It was like a 70.1. So if we can ever get this thing to 5,000 RPM, with all these gears, you may not get it there because it's, you know, it's actually managing your RPMs a little better. So in terms of sound, they're about even. They're about 70 decibels. Both of them are about the same. They're very quiet trucks. Yes, they are. This one sounds better. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you'll hemi roar there. You can hear the hemi roar. <laughs> Dual exhaust out the back end. Yeah, they're both 5.7 liters, so in terms of displacement, it's identical. It was yeah. a very good contest between the two trucks. Very, very close to the match. Yeah, we're halfway, gentlemen. Still, uh, no problem maintaining uh, just over 60 miles per hour. So, so here's the question, Nathan. How are the temperatures looking, and what about the MPG? Uh, MPG is averaging at 7.9. Uh, our average miles per hour is 24. And uh, yeah, our distance is 18.1, and I'm gonna have to get out of this lane because there's a truck ahead of me. Yeah, and we're uh, passing the truck. We are with our trailer too. Of course, he's an empty trailer. He must be just goofing off because there's no reason for him to be driving that slow with an empty truck going uphill. So I had this thought, guys. You know, when Toyota first came into the market with their Tundra, some of the core virtues of Toyota are reliability, quality, and dependability. And that's really a great virtue to have if you're selling a Corolla because that'll sell more Corollas. But today, with how competitive the truck market is, all the domestic trucks are reliable, dependable, and have good quality. So I'm not sure it gets you a lot. I think that's the cost of entry when you're getting into the uh, half-ton truck market. And I think that's why Toyota is struggling to sell more trucks. It would help if it was prettier. <laughs> I, I think it's well, not bad looking. Yeah, I, yeah. This one is badass, David, but I think the Toyota, they've made it better. It's yeah. less bulbous, more macho. The 14 does look a little better. It's like it has a grill to it, like, you know, on the hood scoop. But, you know, that's the truck Truck customers are very brand loyal, you know. It's almost a religion to them. It's, you know, Conquest sales easy. are hard. Yes, hard to hard come change. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if your dad was a Ford guy, chances are you're going to be a Ford guy. That's right. It just gets handed down, just like John Deere and Massey Ferguson and everything else people love. Yeah, that would like be a turncoat like me. <laughs> I'm really impressed this transmission when it's holding the gears, and it has shifted a few times around to try to find the best RPM band, even though this has a, a, the, the torque is at a higher RPM than the Tundra. But this one, is being you know, the 6-speed is standard, the 8-speed is optional. When Hemi first came out, they had a 545 RFE 5-speed. They call it a 5-speed, even though it was similar to a 6. In second gear, it would upshift or downshift at a different ratio. So it was a little tricky to get to race them if you were in the weekend deals with your truck. But this transmission is anybody can drive this one without thinking about it. All right, we're about to hit seven minutes. I think we're to the top of this tunnel. But we, still buried, and yeah. we're just at 60. And we yeah. never got to 5,000 RPMs, did we? We're at 4,200 RPM right yeah, now. This just past is... seven minutes, guys. I mean, we're coming up to the end quickly. And we're slowing down, aren't we, Nathan? No, we're going exactly the same speed. So we it's holding 60, huh? Yep. In the tundra. Uh, now we're right 50. now. Yeah. Here. yeah. This is the peak. Oh, but you just dropped down again. Yeah, this is the peak right here. Is the hardest parts of this run is right at the edge of the tunnel. And Kent, we're uh, at a 5200 RPM right now. Kent says. Here come the lights. Are we saying stop? Yep. Stop. There we have it, gentlemen. <laughs> we just popped out of the Johnson Tunnel. <laughs> All right, guys, 750.24, 750.24, which uh, I think is very close. I don't recall exactly what the Toyota did, but it's very close. Uh, Toyota was just a couple seconds slower. So same displacement makes sense. Nathan, what did you get in terms of MPG? 7.3 miles per gallon. So a little bit better. Not too bad. This is our exit. Yeah. yeah. And very close on decibels. I mean, it was neck and neck. The ram might even be quieter. 
you know, what's impressive too is the Ram didn't, I mean, you look at the RPMs, it didn't hit 5,000 nearly as often as the Tundra did. It actually, it was working less <clears throat> than the Tundra. So those extra gears do pay off. All right, guys, we're going down the Eisenhower gauntlet again. Why is that, Nathan? Folks, we made a mistake. We didn't set the automatic trailer brake to anything. <laughs> so the Ram was taking all the weight of the trailer as we were going downhill, which is why the temperature was so incredibly high. We screwed up. Fortunately, there's enough time left in the day that we're able to try it again. And this time we have the brake set to, what is it, five? Yeah, it's a five on the gain setting, on the integrated brake controller. And we did set up right now. So this is letting the truck and the trailer both work together and braking. Okay, temperature is this. Опять, опять горячо. 594. Well, it's still pretty high, but, but 594 is still cooler than it was before. Yeah, that's still really high. Woo, ты идёшь, смотри. So it does the weight distributing. It actually senses the weight and will distribute brake pressure. So now, you know, in the old days, we put 70%, 80% on the front. Mm -hmm. Now, when they're set up right, they'll actually put brakes on both sides almost equal. So the rotor sides are almost equal now. You know, well, we got a trailer. 86 degrees on the trailer. 86, it was 84 oh, last there. time. So just slightly hotter. Yeah. Well, it was good we redid it. So it wasn't a fluke, guys. Yeah. The brakes oh, get right. damn hot, man. Damn, damn hot. Damn hot. Yeah, surprisingly hot. Surprisingly yes, indeed. Hot. We're good now. All right, Nathan, we have a new leaderboard. Why don't you tell them what it is? That's right, baby. The Ram. Slightly, slightly defeated the Ford F-150 EcoBoost. Oh, and whoa, whoa, dude, that is, that, in all, I mean, I could hit that button, like, that's like, that's even less than a blink of an eye. That is, in all practical purposes, they're tied. I'm sorry, is, is this less than this? They're tied. Is it less than this? It's less than this, as such, rounded it. But to be fair, it's also a lot colder, which makes a little bit of a difference when it comes to combustion. You know, the interesting one for me is that the Tundra was seven seconds faster than the old Tundra, and I think that's because it's colder. Which also means the Ram was at an advantage. That's the one that's a turbocharger for granted. Uh, you know what, we won't even go there. Bottom line is they're really close in times. I mean, look at these times. Yeah, and we need the new Silverado or the GMC with the 6.2 because I think that it can compete with the Ford and the Ram. Be interesting to see what the Titan can do too. As always, this is Roman and Nathan and Kim saying thanks for watching. And remember what, Nathan? Cars are for wussies. See you next time. Ciao. It's really cool to have it right there. Show the hockey puck. There's a hockey puck. That spark gets for me. Hey, Nathan, show him your crotch too. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Action cam. Don't don't put it past me.